My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. That was Father Ted. Father Ted Santiago died last Wednesday, January 31st, at the age of 51, after a long battle with cancer. Father Ted, from the Philippines, was one of the first four priests to join 10 Minutes with Jesus. When we started, we were few in number and still learning the ropes. The audience was also small at the time, and he was keen to be involved, recording meditations until his illness no longer allowed him to continue. Right up until the end, he was praying for us and listening to us every day. I met Ted in Rome before he was ordained. He was a funny guy. Even when he got annoyed at things, he still ended up laughing. And we chatted on Zoom a few months ago. He was still the same happy, positive and encouraging guy I met 20 years ago. Still hoping to be able to record again for 10 minutes with Jesus. And during his illness, he found a prayer that he used many times. He prayed it when the pain was pressing harder. And he shared that prayer. Oh my God, I thank you for this cross you have allowed me to carry. Please give me the strength and faith to persevere so that I may bring glory to your name. Thank you for offering me a share in your suffering. I know you have always been, are now, and ever will be at my side, every step of the way. And in reference to those who were accompanying him, he continued with that prayer, Thank you also for every Simon you have sent to help me bear this cross. I have prayed so often that this thorn in my flesh would be removed, but I trust that your grace is sufficient. And the prayer asks to change the troubled cry of How long, Lord, into words of trust, however long, O Lord. Father Ted was asking you, Jesus, to help him not to waste his pain, but to make of it an offering for others. And the prayer continues, When I am weary and I fall, exhausted under the weight of this cross, please give me the courage to press on as you did. Lord Jesus, I embrace with love my cross, as I share in your own. By your grace, may I carry it all the way to the vision of your glory. Christ Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Well, he did, Father Ted, carry the cross all the way to the vision of his glory. Now, I want to let you listen to some extracts of one of his last meditations, when he was already suffering the physical discomfort of the treatment and symptoms. These are some parts of that meditation preached on the 24th of September 2022 that he named Glowing in Suffering. There was a mom who was standing in a long check outline with her two boys. One was a toddler and the other was a big kid. And the big kid had a pack of glow sticks and the toddler was screaming for one. So the mother was exasperated. She grabbed the bag of uh, glow sticks, opened it up, and gave one to the toddler. Instantly, he stopped crying, and he stood there with the glow stick, smiling. Then his big brother took the glow stick from him, and he started crying again. So just as the mom was about to lash out at the big brother, he bent the glow stick so it started glowing. Then he handed it back to his little brother, who was now amazed with it. 
And then the big brother told him, I had to break it so it would glow. And you know, that toddler would have been content to play with this unbroken glow stick because he had no idea how beautiful it could be when it's broken. And I thought this little incident could help us have the right mind frame. When we come across something whose meaning is obscure to us, or when we encounter a suffering that doesn't seem to have any meaning. In those times, we don't know why God has to break us. But God knows how beautiful we can be when we glow. So sometimes, God, in a manner of speaking, God has to break us so we can glow. That's why He allows us to suffer. And um, we should not be surprised, because even the disciples of our Lord were at a loss at times in coming to grips with suffering, like what we hear in today's Gospel when Jesus said to His disciples, Pay attention to what I'm telling you. The Son of Man is to be handed over to men. But they did not understand this saying. Its meaning was hidden to, from them, so that they should not understand it. Clarifications. So, Like a person who might receive a bad finding from the doctor and then refuse to ask for further questions, so the disciples too, they didn't want to know any more. In our case, Lord Jesus, help us understand the meaning of the cross in our lives. Because like your disciples, we are afraid of suffering. And like them, we tend to think of suffering as meaningless. So as we open our minds to the science of the cross, we bring to you in prayer, Lord, some suffering that we may be experiencing. And we ask you to help us see what it means. You know, Lord, what suffering is from personal experience because you grappled with suffering yourself. And with your love, you brought great good out of it. So when things go wrong and we are downcast, remind us of your passion, Lord, so that we will be able to continue on. At times when a situation is painful, we tend to shut down rather than deal with the situation. And yet, the cross is central to our faith. So if we truly follow Jesus, we cannot separate ourselves from suffering. But the good news is that our suffering for Jesus will not be in vain. There is always something glorious after suffering, after carrying our own cross for Jesus. For sure, Jesus walks most closely by our side when we are broken by trouble. And He gives us the strength to take one more step so that our sufferings are not wasted. Let's put to practice an advice from Mother Angelica. Once she said, Suffering in itself does not make us holy. It is only when we unite it out of love to the sufferings of Christ that it has meaning. But suffering without love is wasted pain. A religious sister relates how she learned this lesson observing a man who comes every day to the bookstore run by the Daughters of St. Paul in Miami. He is a small man in his 70s who wears a flannel shirt and khaki pants belted high on his waist. So when he enters, he puts his hat behind the counter and then walks to the chapel at the back. In the chapel, he genuflects with reverence, then he walks to the crucifix on the wall and kneels down in front of it. So immediately the man begins to pray. He makes the sign of the cross several times kisses his fist, and then stretches out his arms, again moving them slightly with emphasis. And he is missing several fingers. But he has his mangled hands raised in praise before the cross. Then the man kisses the palms of his hands and lays them tenderly several times, on each of the wounds of Jesus on the cross. 
His hands linger on each wound. He kisses each wound of Jesus and then kisses his mangled hands. But let's imagine ourselves in front of the crucifix and listen to Jesus as he says, Take up your cross and follow me. And let's allow ourselves with all the sufferings that we bear to fall into the arms of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for having sent us for the dead and being able to count on him. May he continue to help us now, being closer to you. We ask for all the priests of Ten Minutes with Jesus that following the prayer of San Jose Maria, we may be faithful, devout, wise, generous in self-giving, and always cheerful, as Father Ted was during all his life and during all his death. And we ask the help of our Mother Mary, who knew how to remain beneath the cross. Mother, give us the grace not to run away from the cross, even when we are afraid. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.